All right, welcome to physics. This is going to be our final activity for forces, motion, and momentum. Uh, and the, the next thing we're going to be moving on to is waves. So um, I, I put this little note in here at the top, okay? This is really uh, going to kind of put together everything we've uh, worked on uh, since the beginning of quarter two. Uh, bringing in a little bit from uh, quarter one, okay, as it, it's connected. Uh, but it's really uh, everything we've learned regarding forces in motion and motion, and now asking you to apply it. So this is something that I feel can be graded, should be graded, um, and, and will be added to the grade book. And I would say that this assignment then is also an excellent opportunity. Uh, if you're behind on a couple assignments, uh, this is one that I can use to really demonstrate that, that you've, you know, met the learning target. So uh, this, this is, could be used as a really important assignment, uh, e even if you feel like you've been behind a little bit. Okay, so that's what I want to just put out there for everybody. Um, so uh, I, I started here at the top with some reminders. Um, this is, again, everything that we've, we've already covered. So solving for velocity, uh, you, you have these formulas, okay? Velocity equals distance divided by time. <laughs> the moment I start filming, my dog walks down, starts gulping up water. Uh, <laughs> and the, the common units are meters per second, okay? Hopefully that sounds very familiar now. Then for acceleration, okay, solving for acceleration, I, I included an equation from quarter one, okay, where we had the final velocity minus the initial velocity divided by time. So in, in order to find that, obviously you need these three pieces of information or you can solve for those pieces of information. And then uh, our more current uh, formula for acceleration is acceleration equals force divided by mass. And again, the force should be in newtons and mass should be in kilograms. Okay. Uh, then acceleration, as, as far as we're concerned, uh, will always be meters per second per second for, for this uh, particular example and problems. Okay. Then solving for force. Again, force equals mass times acceleration. Common units. Uh, anytime it's asking you for, you know, what is the force? It should be in newtons. And then uh, I just want to remind us that the downward acceleration due to gravity uh, is 9.8 meters per second per second. Um, then solving for momentum. This was the last little thing we, we touched on earlier this week. Okay, P equals MV is the equation, and that stands for momentum equals mass times velocity. Uh, that the common units then are written like this, and it's kilogram meters per second. Okay, so again, all of that should be a, a quick review, but also a resource if, if you uh, forget and want to refer back to it up here. Okay, so then um, we're really looking to apply uh, our, our understanding of everything that we've covered. So scenario one, uh, I have a five kilogram crate that is being pushed to the left. Okay, you, you then get a little model here. Okay, and and so I'm going to be asking you questions related to this, and this tells you a lot. So uh, the first question is, what is the net force acting on the crate? Uh, don't forget, net force should have a direction if there is an unbalanced force. Okay, continuing on, same scenario, same diagram. What is the acceleration of the crate as a result of the net force? Uh, so again, you, you have pieces of information here, one that you just solved for, and two that was given to you, that will allow you to solve for acceleration. So how, uh, how fast is, probably the common way of saying it, how fast is the box accelerating? Or what rate 
is the box accelerating at based on being pushed to the left. Okay, scenario two now. The scenario is a crate is sitting at rest on the floor. So based on that information, you really should be able to fill out this diagram here. So uh, this first question, what is the strength of the downward force acting on this crate? Same scenario, scenario two, what is the mass of the crate? So that's going to actually uh, re require you to do a little calculation. So, uh, you know, if, if you need to solve for the mass, how can we do that? And then, I believe this is the last question of scenario two, what is the strength of the force pushing to the right? So you've completed the diagram and you've been able to determine the mass of this crate, this box. Oh, I apologize. One more question for scenario two. What is the net force? Uh, and, and hopefully that's, that should be a quick answer as you, you really shouldn't need to calculate anything. Uh, number seven. Okay, so now we're into scenario three. This one uh, is, is a little bit bigger, okay, and it's going to require a little bit more work from you. So the scenario is a skydiver with a mass of 50 kilograms jumps out of an airplane. Uh, it, for this, I, I, I wanted to simplify some of the numbers for us, okay? And uh, you might recall that it, it, it is relatively common to round 9.8 meters per second per second up to 10. Uh, it, it's, it's very close that the numbers won't be too different. Um, but it, it'll help simplify this. So we're going to say that the downward force due to gravity is actually the weight. And so that is going to be mass times 10 meters per second per second. Uh, so you're going to be able to calculate that force of gravity. Then you should be able to fill out this table. So you've got this here. Uh, you can take your cursor and type into it. You can zoom. If you want, you can take the hand to move it around. Okay, but the goal then is that you fill this table out. And I'll give you a little bit of a hint. Once you calculate the weight, which again, uh, I gave you the equation over here, this doesn't change. This will remain constant, okay? Uh, what will change though is the net force based on the air resistance. And then that will also impact the acceleration, okay? You're then gonna use that table to answer some of these short answer questions to see if you're truly understanding what's going on. Yeah. All right, <laughs> now my dog really needs to go to the bathroom apparently. So I am going to uh, let him out super fast. Oh my God. I apologize. <laughs> I really did not want an accident at my door as he's whining in my face. Uh, scenario four. Okay, so this is the last little bit, and uh, it, it I think might sound more complicated than it is, but I really wanted to uh, have you calculate a real life uh, a example around force. So uh, you will be determining what is the thrust force. Uh, Thrust is a type of force from a from a jet engine. So uh, you're, you're just calculating force. And so we, we know that equation up above that formula. And, and then I give you the information that you need. And so uh, the scenario, I think, is pretty impressive. Um, but the Airbus A380 is the largest commercial airplane on the market. And its maximum mass for takeoff is 575,000 kilograms then the average plane commercial flight needs a certain rate of acceleration in order to take off. And, and that rate of acceleration is 2.5 meters per second per second. So uh, with that, you can calculate how much force is required to get this airplane off uh, the runway and into the air. OK, 
okay? Uh, so that, again, is an overview of everything we've learned. Don't forget about these uh, important resources up here to help you out. And, of course, if you have any questions, please make sure you let me know, and I'm happy to help. Uh, and, and, again, this will be going in the gradebook. So please, please, please do it, and please ask for help.